Hello and welcome to the Legacy Crusaders YouTube channel. My name is Benji, and today we're going to be talking about Mystic Mine, which is a card used in a deck that recently took down the Rio de Janeiro Brazil YCS. So this deck, here's the deck list. I'm just going to show it to you. It is a Floodgate deck. It plays Ojama Duo and Trio to give you monsters, and then it either locks you into those monsters using Mystic Mine, goes in match, Rivalry of the Warlords, and it even plays There Can Be Only One in the side deck for if your opponent's actually on a light beast deck would be my guess. But today we're going to talk about five tips relating to Mystic Mind. Those tips are going to be common misconceptions regarding Mystic Mind, ways on outing your opponent's Mystic Mind, methods for outing your own Mystic Mind if you want to play it yourself, cards that work under Mystic Mind, and cards that people think do work but do not work under Mystic Mind. And those are going to be the five tips. So our first tip is covering the common misconceptions. Firstly, once Mystic Mind hits the board, many duelists have no idea what they're doing. They have no longer know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! They can't read any cards. Nothing they've ever thought of ever makes sense ever again. And the first thing is the most common kind of misconception is just duelists praying that this works even though it clearly does not, which is assuming that Mystic Mind does not affect monsters that activate in the graveyard or your hand, for reasons I cannot understand. The basic restriction of Mystic Mind is that whoever controls more monsters cannot declare attacks with any monsters under any circumstances, and cannot activate monster effects anywhere. You cannot even attempt to activate them. Even mandatory monster effects cannot activate. Many duelists have tried to use their Shadal Dragons to try and pop Mystic Mine when I play it against them in my combo deck. I'm not on the burn deck, but they try to use Shadal Dragon to out it. They use Dogmatica Punishment to send an Elder Entity end test to the graveyard and then try and use that to out it when the monster count is still in my favor. There's a lot of weird things that duelists try to do because they're just, they can't figure out what they're doing. You need to know what your options are so you can make sensible decisions. So monster effects are not the things you're going to be using to have a Mystic Mine. They even try to use unaffected monsters, assuming that they'll be able to play through Mystic Mine. Now, while unaffected monsters might not be affected by cards like at the Knight's Fogblade, which says the monster cannot declare an attack, it'll even still be able to attack monsters that have Fogblade on it, because it says those monsters cannot be targeted for attack, or monsters cannot target it for attack. So an unaffected monster can still target the monster for attack. But unaffected monsters cannot activate their effects, nor declare attacks under Mystic Mind either, because it affects the actions available to a player. The player who has more monsters cannot activate effects, nor declare attacks. So it's irrelevant that the monster is unaffected by card effects. So the most likely way for dealing with Mystic Mind is to use spell and trap cards that actually are removal. So Harpy's Feather Duster is one of the most commonly played deck cards. If you want to play one spell and trap card in your deck, that's a pretty good one. A couple of duelists are currently on Galaxy Cyclone, because it's a card you can mill in your tier elements deck, giving you access to a pop from the graveyard during your turn, using it on either your own cards or your opponent's cards, so it's a pretty good one to play. Although if you're up against a pure burn Mystic Mind deck, like the one we were talking about before, Field Barrier is a card that could be played, which prevents you from destroying the Mystic Mind, so you might need to use some alternative spell and trap card destruction, such as Cosmic Cyclone, by simply removing the card from the game. With, by banishing it, it plays around cards that protect it. People are also on Beat Cop of the Underworld, which is trying to protect their own Mystic Minds or Floodgates, so this plays around that. You can also remove her from the field with set rotation. Uh, this also plays around like Ash Blossom, which is kind of cool. So this is another way to remove your opponent's Mystic Mind from the board. And a common misconception is that you can negate Mystic Mind using a card called Blizzard. So Blizzard says target one face-up spell or trap card your opponent controls, which is its activation condition. It says target one face-up spell your opponent controls. This turn, negate the activated effects of that spell and all spells on the field with that card, same original name. Meaning that it doesn't affect Mystic Mind's continuous effect, which is to prevent you from declaring attacks or activating monster effects, it prevents its effect from attempting to destroy itself in the end phase from activating. That's the only activated effect on Mystic Mind. So if you want them to not be able to activate that effect, use Blizzard on it. Another card I've seen used in the same scenario is someone will activate their own Mystic Mind and then activate Sales Ban, which is a card that allows you to call the name of a card, and then that card cannot be activated by your opponent that turn, but then you cannot activate it during the duel. So if you activate your own Mystic Mind and then activate Sales Ban, calling Mystic Mind during your end phase you'll never have to, uh, during any end phase, you'll never have to activate the effect to destroy itself because you're not allowed to. So if your opponent has Mystic Mine on the field, we're going to talk about how to deal with that. One of the methods you have for dealing with that is trying to link down until you have the same number of monsters that your opponent has. You can combine all your monsters into an Appaloosa, and if you both have one monster on the field during the end phase, it'll be forced to activate its effect to destroy itself. Again, there are ways to play around this by summoning an additional monster onto either side of the field to prevent this from ever being able to activate. One of the other things you can do is you can attempt to take control of one of your opponent's monsters with Sky Striker Widow Anchor, and then force them to activate the effect of Mystic Mind to destroy itself. Now, depending on whose end phase this is, this may or may not work out in your favor. If it's your end phase, you have to resolve the effect of Widow Anchor first returning their monster. If it's their end phase, they have to activate the effect of Mystic Mind before you resolve the effect of Widow Anchor. So depending on whose turn it is, this may or may not be a good strategy for outing your opponent's Mystic Mind. You can also do this on your turn for outing your own Mystic Mind. There are some pretty neat tricks you can do 
that are effectively the same. I'm not going to mention in the next section here as well, because that's the same thing. You can also try and summon monsters from your deck to even out the monster count with things like Emergency Teleport or Quick Launch or World Legacy's Memory in the same vein as taking their monster with Widow Anchor. These methods don't work so well because odds are if your opponent's Mystic Mine is on the field, you summoning monsters is not going to be the trick that's going to out them. Your opponent could also turn off their own mine using these tricks and summon monsters to their field. So these are things you need to keep in mind. If the monster count changes during the end phase, there is always a chance that the Mystic Mine is going to be destroyed and you'll be able to continue to play on the next turn, or your opponent will be. Outing Mystic Mine in the end phase is a bit of a trick in itself because depending on whose turn it leaves the field might dictate the outcome of the game. Other monsters that can be summoned during the end phase would be something like Gizmic Orochi, which is currently being played in certain decks. Just another monster to keep in mind uh, is an option for this scenario. Your opponent could try out their own Mystic Mind using things like Fairy Tale Snow, and so could you if you played your own. So now are our tips for dealing with your own Mystic Mind if you play it. This tip also applies to Fairy Tale Snow, but you can use Fairy Tale Snow to remove your own Mystic Mind from the field. I've also tried in the past using Eater of Millions as a card that can remove my own Mystic Mind from the field in order to push for game. It's useful to have ways to do that on your own turn, and this works even if you're under your own Mystic Mind. So if your opponent thought they left you under Mystic Mind, you can still use the summon. Other methods available for dealing with your own Mystic Mind is simply using your Forbidden Droplets to negate your opponent's monsters. I actually will activate Mystic Mind and Normal Summon a monster, and then if my opponent summons anything, I can activate Droplet and put them under mine. But you can also use Droplet for turning mine off, which is why I still use it in this format, even though Dark Ruler might be a better card. I like the option of turning off my own Mystic Mind with Forbidden Droplet. You can also out it with your Galaxy Cyclone. If you're on a tier element deck, you can simply get it into the graveyard by discarding it that way. I actually play Foolish Goods in my tier element deck, so I can actually Foolish Goods my Galaxy Cyclone to the graveyard, but I usually send tier element Selk, but that's just what I do. You can always turn off your own Mystic Mind by simply setting a new field spell, a new Mystic Mind. If you draw into another one, you can remove the first one by setting a new one. You can do that with any field spell, but then if, you, if everything goes poorly, you can always flip it over again. Again, I have more information on field spells in my rulebook video on spell cards. Feel free to look at that. It'll be in the card up above. One of my favorite ways for adding my own mine is by using Divine Arsenal AA Zeus Sky Thunder. I play Orcus, so I just make a one card Ding Girsu using Girsu, and then I attack into the Girsu token I give to my opponent, and then I make a Zeus, and then during my opponent's end phase, I will try and hold the Zeus for so that on my turn, they have no cards, and I get to do whatever I want with my cards. There are some monsters that have effects that do affect Mystic Mind that are useful. One of them is called Gate Blocker. This was played in the past in Ad Emancipator. It negates the effects of field spells. Personally, I've never used this card, but it is a card that actually does work under Mystic Mind because its effect is continuous. It doesn't need to activate. It just starts negating field spells. And once your opponent's field spell is negated, you can activate all the cards you want. A spell Canceler is an interesting one that was played for a little while. It was a card you can draw into in an all-monster deck in a format where Sekka's Light was played, and people who played Sekka's Light had no outs for Mystic Mind because Mystic Mind needs to be outed by spells and trap cards generally. Otherwise, it has to be outed using continuous effects such as Spell Canceler, or you need to actually play a whole bunch of mind games trying to finagle the number of monsters on both players' fields to be the same at some point so it can destroy itself, or by tricking your opponent to turning it off so they think that they can go for a game. These two cards are useful for dealing with Mystic Mind without worrying about playing spells and trap cards that deal with it. Uh, another interesting one is if you play DDD, is uh, DDD Duo Dong King Kaliuga has a continuous effect that applies the moment it's summoned. So if it's summoned, the effects of all cards on the field are negated. That includes Mystic Mine, and then it also has an effect of Heavy Storm, all spells and trap cards on the field. So you can simply remove the Mystic Mine from the field that way. So personally, I've always wanted to try and play this card in a deck, find some way to summon it because it just doesn't activate and it's pretty good and make a Zeus with it. It's an interesting way to out Mystic Mind. Some cards that people think work but don't work are things like Theory and King Regulus. If your opponent attempts to activate Mystic Mind, you can use Regulus to negate the effect of Mind, but that doesn't really do anything because it doesn't destroy the card. It'll stay on the field and then it'll begin applying. So what Regulus does in a lot of cards that negate the effect of a card, it only negates the effect briefly for that exact second, but no longer than that. You could have Regulus Send itself, which might allow you to out Mystic Mind, by messing with the monster count, but there's no guarantee that that works. So Theory and King Regulus, a Math Mech Diameter's effect that applies to the Xe monsters or the Synchro you summon with it, Sprite Carrot, none of these effects can stop Mystic Mine. Carrot might be able to if you tribute a Rank 2 or a Link 2 instead of just a Level 2, you can actually negate the card and destroy it. So these cards don't really work, but sort of work on Mystic Mine. So these are things you should keep in mind when trying to figure out what your outs are in your deck. And that's going to wrap this up. The next video I'm putting out is actually a how to play sprite video. And stay tuned. I hope to see you guys soon.